fam, Alexa Rains here with another reaction. So today we're going to continue with our Star Trek journey, and this time it's with season two's episode titled, Who Mourns Adonais? So I'm super excited. I have no idea what this is about, so excited to get back into it. And as always, if you're looking for the full-length reaction to this episode or any of my other content, you can find that on Patreon, and it will be watch-along format, meaning that you need your own um, version of the show or movie and sync it to mine. And uh, also, if you would like to support the channel on YouTube, you could do so by subscribing, commenting, and liking this video. And that will help share our message across the world. So again, I'm so excited and I can't wait to watch it with you guys. So without further ado, let's get into our episode. Lieutenant, you look a bit tired this morning. That's not nice to say. Well, in that case, there's nothing like a wee bit of coffee to get you back in shape. Join me, Carolyn. All right, Scotty. Just let me give this. Oh. Bones. Could you get that excited over a cup of coffee? Oh. From here, I can tell his pulse rates up. He likes her. Gentlemen, I'm not sure I like that, Jim. Why do you like her too? Why, Bones? Scotty's a good man, and he thinks he's the right man for her. But I'm not sure she thinks he's the right man. One day she'll find the right man, off she'll go, out of the service. Mm -hmm. I like to think of it not so much as losing an officer as gaining... Come along. Actually, I'm losing an officer. <laughs> what in the name of... What the heck? Is that a hand? Analysis, Mr. Spock. It's a hand. Momentarily. I can analyze it, it's a hand. Can it's I... a fist. That's opening. Things? No. Unless I am too. Captain. Is it? Things, uh, yes. Giant hand. It is. What is it, Mr. Spark? Is it uh, a hand? It is. Negative, Captain. Not living tissue. But it's still Project a hand. Projection? Not a projection, sir. A field of energy. That's shaped as a hand. It's almost as if it means to grab it. Yes, it's trying Reverse to all all take you. Reverse. What is this? We're dead still, Captain. Helm doesn't answer. We can't move. Oh my god, it's holding it like this. Do y'all see that? Oh Captain's no. Star date that looks so cool though. It looks like the planet has a hand. Approaching Polox 4, a planet in the Beta Geminorum system. The Enterprise has been stopped in space. By a hand. An unknown force of some kind. It's a hand. Is that you, Mr. Adonais? Activity on hailing channel three, sir. Put it on audio, Lieutenant. The eons have passed. And what has been written has come about. Oh. You are most welcome, my beloved children. Oh. Your places await you. Are you responsible for stopping the ship? Yes. Is that heaven or something? I caused the wind to withdraw from your sails. Give it back, then we'll talk. <laughs> it has been 5,000 years. Have you learned no patience in that time? I don't know who or what you are. But I must warn you, we have the power to defend ourselves. If you value your safety, release this ship. You will obey me, lest I close my hand. Thus. Internal pressure building up, Captain. It's becoming critical, Captain. We can't handle it. All right, whatever you're doing, turn it off. You win. Pressure's gone, Captain. Captain Kirk, I invite you and your officers to join me. But do not bring that one. The one with the pointed ears. Why not? He is much like Pan, and Pan always bored me. No sad faces. This is a time to rejoice, not to fear. Who's Pan? You are returning home. Verbose, isn't he? <laughs> Insulted, Spock. 
Insults are effective only where emotion is present. Good. We'll tackle them together. We already know the questions. You're the best man to find the answers. Is he like one of the gods? Children, one of the great gods or something? How have I waited for this moment? The memories you bring of your lush and beautiful earth. Green fields and blue skies. The simple shepherds and their flocks. You know of Earth? You've been there? Once I stretched out my hand, and Earth trembled. And I breathed upon it, and spring returned. I am Apollo. Oh! And I am the Tsar of all yeah. the Russias. <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain. I never met a god before. And you haven't yet. Readings, Doctor. Simple humanoid, Captain. Evidently not so simple. We're here at your invitation. Would you mind telling us what you want without all the Olympian generalities? You will not leave this place. Wait, what? Transporter room. The transportation device no longer functions. What is it you want? You will worship me, as your fathers did before you. If you want to play God and call yourself Apollo, that's your business. But you're no God to us, mister. I said you would worship me. Welcome to Olympus, Captain Kirk. Jeez Louise. Coin a phrase. Fascinating. Yeah. That's what Spock would have said. Lieutenant Palamas, what do you know about Apollo? Apollo, a twin brother of Artemis, son of the god Zeus, and Leto, a mortal. He was the god of light and purity. He was skilled in the bow and the lyre. And this thing? Obviously, he has some knowledge of Earth. His classical references and uh, the appearance of all this. What if he is really Apollo? Why? Captain? Oh, gosh. I want from you that which is rightfully mine. Your loyalty, your tribute, and your worship. I have 430 people in that ship up there. No, you do not, Captain. They are mine. To save, to cherish, or to destroy at my will. But why? What you've said so far makes no sense at all. Come. She's not going with you. You shall learn the discipline of the temple. So shall you all. Come. It's all right, Captain. I'll go. I'm not sure it's wise to let her go off like that. He would have been rather difficult to stop. I know, right? How like precious he is. Benevolent one minute, angry the next. One wrong move from her and he could kill her. Mr. Chekhov, I think you better continue your investigation. Aye, aye, sir. He's in love. Tingling all over. Besides your stiff neck thistle head, you could have gotten yourself killed. <laughs> Say, 5,000 years ago, a highly sophisticated group of space travelers landed on Earth around the Mediterranean. To the simple shepherds and tribesmen of early Greece, creatures like that would have been gods. Especially if they had the power to alter their form at will and command great energy. In fact, oh. they couldn't have been taken for anything else. There seems to be a radiated energy pulsation coming from the planet. I don't know what it is, sir. Origin? I can't seem to pinpoint it, sir. I would suggest, Mr. Sulu, that if you cannot find out where the power source is, you should find out where it is not. A simple process of elimination. Mm-hmm. The whole planet, sir? Well, I mean, that's what you have to start with. Oh, planet. <laughs> Frightened of me. 
frightened? No, I don't think so. Of course, a girl doesn't go walking with a... A god? All right. A god. Every day. What happened to the others? Artemis, Hera. They returned to the cosmos. The wings of the wind. But the earth changed. Our fathers changed. They turned away until we were only memories. God cannot survive as a memory. We need love, admiration, worship. As you need food, we could have struck out from Olympus and destroyed. We have no wish to destroy. So we came home again. It was an empty place without worshippers. But we had no strength to leave. So we waited, all of us, through the long years. Even 5,000 years ago, the gods took mortals to them to love, to care for. Like Zeus took Leto, my mother. We were gods of passion, of love. There is a repeated occurrence of Jeez. a regular pulsating pattern of radiated energy. That he, Apollo, taps a flow of energy and channels it through his body? That would seem most likely, sir. Mr. Chekho, I think you've earned your pay for the week. But where is the source of that power? Number one on our list of things to do. Is that all you have to offer? <laughs> yes, except my estimation for his physical condition. All right, mister. You wanted worshippers? We've got enemies. You want us to bow down? You have to... <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, let's assume that 5,000 years ago, creatures like our friend Apollo did indeed visit Earth and form the basis of the Greek classic myths. Makes sense. Most mythology has its basis in fact. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember my ancient legends. The gods, after expending energy, required rest, even as we humans. We can wear them out, overwork them. That might do it. The trouble with overworking him is that it can get us killed. Yes. If we can provoke him so that he strikes one of us again, there's a chance that he'll be drained enough so the rest of us can jump him. I still say it can get us killed. Not all of us, Bones. When he comes back. It's a chance we'll have to take. Progress report. I'm connecting the bypass circuit now, sir. It should take another half hour. Speed is essential, Lieutenant. Mr. Spock, I haven't done anything like this in years. If it isn't done just right, I could blow the entire communication system. It's very delicate work, sir. I can think of no one better equipped to handle it, Miss Uhura. Aww. We'll take these equations to the nuclear electronics lab. I want them to work on the problem of negating the force field in selected areas. Now, it might be done by generating a strong pinpoint charge of M rays on some of these selected wavelengths and tying them in with the combined output of all our engines. Right away, sir. That sounded super smart. No idea what that meant, but it sounded smart. Your tricks don't frighten us, neither do you. We've come a long way in 5,000 years. But you're still of the same nature. I could sweep you out of existence with a wave of my hand and bring you back again. I can give life or death. What else does mankind demand of its gods? Mankind has no need for gods. We find the one quite adequate. I said approach me. We're busy. Talk to the girl. <laughs> you will gather laurel leaves, light the ancient fires, kill a deer, make your sacrifices to me. Apollo has spoken. Go. You shall reap the rewards of your insolence. We're tired of your phony fireworks. Mortal, you have earned this. No, don't. Father doesn't destroy his children. You said you were gentle and understanding. Lieutenant! Please don't hurt them. She didn't understand the the fact that this was the plan. Please. 
You messed up the plan. I shall be lenient <sighs> with you. God, the, for her sake. Just throw something at him. You will dismantle your ship for the supplies you need. And I'll crush its empty hull. Girl, you messed up the whole plan. <sighs> God, Lee. We've got to do something. We were doing something until our brave lady stepped in and saved us. Got any more good ideas, Jim? Yes, I have. One more, and it depends on the lieutenant's loyalty. I offer you more than your wildest dreams have ever imagined. He sounds like a dictator. I don't like dictators. You'll inspire the universe. All men will revere you. Almost as a god yourself. I shall love you for time without end, worlds without end. He wants us to live in peace. He wants to provide for us. Yeah, that's not going to happen, though. Give us everything we ever wanted. He thrives on love, worship, attention. Yes. We can't give him that worship. None of us can, especially you. That's what makes him stronger. Spurn him, Lieutenant. All our lives, here and on the ship, depend on you. No, not on me. On you, Lieutenant. Yes, on you. Make the right decision. We have a chance to save ourselves. Accept him. And you condemn all of us to slavery. Nothing less than slavery. We might never get help this far out. Oh, but you don't understand. He's kind, and, and he wants the best for us. And he's so lonely. That's not your problem. Break his heart. Well, that's not your problem, babes. How can I? What about all the other people who depend on you? And the only thing that's truly yours is the rest of humanity. That's where our duty lies. Come on, girl, you got this. He's calling me. Lieutenant. You have your orders and your duty. I must say, Apollo, the way you ape human behavior is remarkable. But there are some other things I must know. Your evolutionary patterns and your social development. I've never encountered a specimen like you before. I am Apollo. I've chosen you. Well, I'm sure that's very flattering, but I must get on with my work now. Your work? I'm a scientist. <laughs> well, surely you know I've only been studying you. I don't believe it. You love me. Love you? Be logical. I'm not some simple shepherdess you can awe. <laughs> Shields. Wow. Oh, you did it, girl. You saved the day. I would have made a goddess of you. I've shown you my open heart. Oh, Now I kind of feel bad for him. See what you've done to me. Athena. You were right. The time has passed. 
There is no room for gods. Forgive me, my old friends. I wish we hadn't had to do this. So do I. Yeah, but there was no other way, though. They gave us so much. The Greek civilization, much of our culture and philosophy came from a worship of those beings. The way they began the golden age. Would it have hurt us, I wonder, just to have gathered a few laurel leaves? <sighs> that was a doozy of an episode. Golly. All right, guys. So this was season two of Star Trek uh, episode title, Who Mourns for Other Nice? Um, I don't know if I'm saying it right. I just, <laughs> whenever I see this word, I just think of saying it in the Haitian way. But um, yeah, it was a good episode. Um, we were dealing with the Greek god Apollo and um, his need to be worshipped and to be worshipped by the uh, crew of the Enterprise and um, also taking in Caroline as his goddess and him not wanting them to leave and be sovereign but go back to the old ways of uh, them worshiping gods and i identified with what kirk said he said you know we are we only worship the one and we're good with the one um because that's kind of my perspective <laughs> but um at the end it was sad though to see and it's a thought that i have sometimes that you know I would imagine that it it would suck as a Greek god to have all this love and adoration coming in from sacrifices, et cetera, et cetera. And then for there now to be a world where you're only thought of as a myth. So if they did exist, like, or if they do exist, um, the thought of, hey, like we were, we were it, we were the golden children for so long. And then now people have forgotten about us, forgot like our significant, our true significance. All they know us, uh, all they know us as our characters. So whether from comic books, from uh, movies, TV shows, and um, from history books, but not, they're not concrete in our minds. They're kind of like these mythical things uh, or this, these mythical beings. So seeing that from that perspective of him at the end be like you know you guys were right talking to the other gods that you guys were right that you know the time of the gods have passed and you know they don't remember us they don't know us and uh you know take me and and it just seeing that and seeing how broken he was by the fact that you know humans would not worship him and he doesn't see worship as slavery or like the type of worship that he's asking for as slavery the way that the humans do he sees it as recognition for all that he's going to provide for them but what he doesn't understand is what they what he wants to provide for them is no longer what they want or no longer what they need because we've events from way back then from five thousand years ago and uh so it was a it was a it was a great episode. It was, it was, there was a lot in it. And I feel like this is one of those episodes that I might go back to and maybe like expand on in like a podcast format, because I feel like there was a lot of, there was a lot of juiciness, a lot of meat to this episode. Um, but yeah, enjoyed it through and through. I hope you guys did too. Um, and if you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I can't wait to see what you guys have to say about this episode. And uh, yeah, it was great. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.